One. Okay. Function return values. There's one last essential concept for us to discuss in this course to look to close our look at functions, return values. Some functions don't return a significant value after completion, but others do. And it's important to understand what their values are, how to make use of them in your code, and how to make your own custom functions that return useful values. We'll cover all these below. What are return values? Return values are just what they sound like. Values returned by the function when it completes. You've already met return values a number of times, although you may have not thought about them explicitly. Let's return to some familiar code. And here's I'm a string, the replace, and console log. Um, we saw this block of code in our first function article. We are invoking the replace function in my text string and passing it two parameters, the substring to find and the substring to replace it with. When this function completes, finishes running, it returns a value, which is a new string with the replacement made. In the code above, we are saving this return value as the value of the new string variable. If you look at the replace function MDN reference page, you'll see a section called return value. It is very useful to know and understand what values are returned by functions, so we try to include this information whenever possible. Some functions don't return a return value, such as in our reference pages, the return value is listed as void or undefined in some cases. For example, in the display message function we built in the previous article, no specific value is returned as a result of the function being invoked. It just makes the box appear somewhere on the screen, and that's it. Generally, a return value is used when the function is an inter intermediate step in a calculation of some kind. You want to get a final result, which involves some values. Those values need to be calculated by a function, which then turns the results so they can be used in the next stage of the calculation. Using return values in your own functions. To return a value from a custom function, you need to use, wait for it, the return keyword. We saw this in action recently in our random canvas circles example. Our draw function draws 100 random circles somewhere on the HTML. Inside each loop iteration, three calls are made to the random function to generate a random value for the current circle's x-coordinate, y-coordinate, and radius, respectively, or radius respectively. The random function takes one parameter, a whole number, and it returns a whole random number between zero and that number. It looks like this. Function random number number, turn math.floor math.random times number. This could also be written as followed. Function random number number var result equals math.floor math random return result. But the first version is quicker to write and more compact. We are returning the result of the calculation math dot floor math dot random times number each time the function is called. This return value appears at the point the function was called and the code continues. So for example, if we ran the following line and the three random calls returned the values 500, 200, and 35 respectively, the line would actually be run as if it were this, 500, 235. The function calls on the line are first are run first and their values substituted for the function calls before the line itself is then executed. Active learning, our own return value function. First of all, make a local copy of this file from GitHub. Okay. Copy this over to CodePen. Okay. This is a simple HTML page containing a text input field and a paragraph. There is also a script element in which we have stored a reference to both HTML elements in two variables. This little page will allow you to enter a number into the text box and display different numbers related to it in the paragraph below. Let's add some useful functions to this script. Below the existing two lines of JavaScript, add the following function definitions. So I'm going to copy paste this. 
So it said below the lines. And we'll tidy it. There we go. We got squared, cubed, and factorial. The squared and cube functions are fairly obvious. They return the square and cube of the number given as a parameter. The factorial function returns the factorial of a given number. Next, we're going to include a way to print out information about the number entered into the text input. Enter the following event handler below the existing functions. Okay, you can copy that. And then we'll tidy. So input unchanged function. If it's not a number, it'll print this, else it'll print number squared is squared, number cubed is cubed, number factorial is factorial. Okay, pretty much makes sense. Here we are creating an unchange event handler that runs whenever the change event fires on the text input. That is when a new value is entered into the text input and submitted. Enter a value, then press tab, for example. When this anonymous function runs, the existing value in, into the input is stored in the num variable. So three, there you go. Three squared is nine, three cubed is 27, three factorial is six. What about 3,000? Okay, those are some big numbers. <laughs> 3,000 factorial is infinity. Um, next we do a conditional test. If, we, if the inner value is not a number, we print an error message into the paragraph. Test looks at whether the expression is not a number, returns true. We use the is not a number function to test whether the num value is not a number. If so, it returns true. If not, it returns false. Um, if the test returns false, the num value is a number. So we print out a sentence inside the paragraph stating square cube and factorial of the number are. Sentence calls the squared cubed and factorial functions to get the required values. Save your code, load it in the browser and try it out. So if you come back here and enter A, it says you need to enter a number. And anything you enter that's not a number, it'll say the same thing. Okay, note, if you're having trouble getting this work, feel free to check your code against the finished version on GitHub. At this point, we'd like you to have a go at writing a couple functions of your own and adding them to the library. How about the square or cube root of a number or the circumference of a circle with the radius length of num? This exercise has brought up a couple important points besides being a study on how to use a return statement. In addition, we have looked at another example of writing error handling into our functions. It is generally a good idea to check that any necessary any necessary parameters have been provided and in the right data type, and if they are optional, that some kind of default value is provided to allow for that. This way, your program will be less likely to throw errors. Thought about the idea of creating a function library? As you go further into your programming career, you'll start to do the same kinds of things over and over again. It is a good idea to start keeping your own library of utility functions that you'll use very often. You can copy them over to your new code or even just apply it to any HTML pages where you need it. So there we have it. Functions are fun, very useful, and although there's a lot of folks or there's a lot of talk about in regards to their syntax and functionality, fairly understandable given the right articles to study. If there's anything you don't understand, feel free to read through the article again or contact us for help. So are there any questions on functions? This was pretty simplistic so far. Yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, they didn't go into, they didn't just like jump straight into higher order functions or recursion, <laughs> which some tutorials I know do like, they teach you the simple basics of functions and they're like, all right, here's a higher order function. <laughs>
See if you can figure out how it works. And it's like you never even explained it. Okay. Um, how much more we got left? You got introduction to events, and then we got our project. So, um, Adam, do you want to read this next one? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> 